Yo, we are getting involved in a lot of pots, hitting a lot of sets, going against a tough lady who just is relentless and won't give up. You don't want to miss it. Check it out. What's up, guys? Thanks for coming back for another episode of the Poker Vlog. It's your boy, Nietzsche, and I want to send a shout out and a thank you to all of my subscribers. We just hit 1,300 the other day. So thank you for all the support, all the love. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subbed, please do so. Smash that like button, hit that sub button, and hit that notification bell so you can get the latest and greatest straight hot off the press. Today, we go to Lucky Chances Casino. We are playing in the 2-3-5 game. It's gonna be a lot of fun. There's a lot of action. There's a lot of hands to go through. So let's just get to it. Let's hit the felt. This video was created for entertainment purposes only. By no means am I a professional poker player. The following video is not intended to teach nor train, but rather to provide a look into my journey. Please gamble at your own risk. All right, let's start this vlog out with a super premium. That's right, it's the good old king eight of spades we are in the big blind and only six people are dealt in under the gun raises to 15 and basically the whole table calls so we come along with the most overused term in poker pot odds we have a family pot going on and the flop is king jack for rainbow since we're kind of up front and don't have a big kicker we check to see what our opponents want to do and to our surprise it gets checked through. This is a very good sign as our top pair is most likely the best hand at this point. Now, the turn card is the seven of spades. It gets checked to us again, and now we bet 50. We get called in three spots. Not really a good situation, seeing as we probably need to dodge 80% or more of the deck to win the hand. The river is probably one of the worst cards we could see as it is the jack of spades. And now, one of these guys probably called us with middle pair on the turn. So we give up and check. And we get a second surprise in this hand as it gets checked through. We show our hand and we are good. Now we pick up two tens in the big blind. There's a raise to 15 for middle position, cutoff, button, and small blind call. We call as well. So we're going five ways to the flop, which is ace, 10, eight, rainbow. Huge flop for us. We have middle set and there's an ace on board with two Broadway. Couldn't ask for a better flop. We check to the pre-flop raiser and he bets 40. The cutoff thinks about it for a bit and wants to charge anybody else who wants to get involved in this pot, 160. It seems like a spot where she could maybe have ace king or top and bottom. Button and small blind both fold and it gets to us. The cutoff has about 400 behind. We only lose to aces at this point, so we just put in the call. Middle position does not want to be a part of this party any longer and mucks his cards. So we're going heads up to a turn, which brings the four of hearts. This is a complete blank and doesn't change the texture of this board at all. We make a mistake here and check. Now she checks behind. We probably should have let out a small amount on the turn and committed her to put her money in since she's checking most of her range here. Our cold call is perceived as super strong. Now we both see the river and it's the six of diamonds. This card is pretty much inconsequential because she'll never have nine seven in her range. So now we place a bet of 210. It's a small bet to get her to call, but like I said, our range is way too strong here. So she thinks about it for a bit and eventually makes the fold. We lost a lot of value on the turn and it was just overall a bad play by us. Okay guys, unfortunately I was unable to get this hand on table footage, but I still want to go over it with you guys. So, we have Ace-10 of Diamonds under the gun. We race to 15. There's a couple of callers and the big blind comes along as well. So we are going four ways to the flop of 10, 5, 4 with two hearts. This is a good flop for us. When it gets checked to us, we need to put in a bet here. So, we place a bet of 
$30. Only the big blind call, so we are going heads up to a turn, which is the Jack of Diamonds. With all things said, the Jack is actually a pretty good card for us, and when the opponent checks into us one more time, we elect to place a bet of $75. It's a value bet. It's also a deny equity type of bet. So he makes the call and we are going to a river card. The river pairs the bottom card. It's a four. This is a really good card for us. So we have two options here. We can place a value bet or we can check behind. Uh, if we value bet, what are we getting to call us? Maybe a week or 10. Um, if we check behind, what are we checking behind for? Well, if he has a four, he beats us. If he has a five, he's probably not calling anyways. If he has a 10, yeah, sure, he might call. If he has Jack X of hearts, then we're really going to be value owning ourselves on the river here. So let's just check back. We check back and he shows queen 10 off. We table our hand and we take down this pot. Okay guys, it is mystery hand time. For those of you new to this segment of the video, we go through the progressions from pre-flop, flop, turn, and river while keeping our hand concealed. You can guess what we have and post it in the comments below. Later in the video, I will reveal our cards. Let's see if you can put us on a hand. We are in the cutoff. Under the gun raises to 25. Only we call. So we're going heads up to the flop of King Jack 8 monotone it is all hearts he checks and we bet 30. he makes the call the turn is the three of hearts he checks and we check back the river is the five of hearts now he bets 80. we make the call now what do we have here do we have a ace queen off with the queen of hearts b pocket jacks c 10 9 of hearts or d king 10 with the 10 of hearts type your guess in the comments below and let's see if you can guess our hand in this next hand we look down at ace jack off on the button it folds to us and we raise to 20. it folds to the big blind and she calls with uh, about 160 behind so we're going heads up to the flop which is 10 9 deuce with two hearts she checks and we just check back. We only have ace high here. But the turn. The turn is the ace of spades. She bets 35 and we just ship in the rest here. We're ahead of her range and it's a pretty wet board. She eventually makes the call and the river is the six of hearts bringing in the front door hearts. But we show and we win. All right, another pocket pair. This time we have nines in the small blind. It gets folded to the button and he raises to 20. It's a pretty standard button open with most likely a wide range. So only we call. We are going heads up to the flop of 10, 9, 8, 2 diamonds. Yes, another set. This is a super dynamic board, so we're hoping that he connected or has some sort of draw. We play inflow and check. Unfortunately, he checks back. Not a good sign as he probably doesn't have any piece of this board. The turn brings the deuce of clubs. We can't let another streak go without putting in some money, so we bet 25. He quickly calls. The river is a pretty good card as it's the ace of spades. He's weighted toward a lot of ace x holdings, so we want to size up a bit. We place a bet of 75. He thinks about it and folds. We love flopping sets, but we love getting value out of them more. Hopefully that'll be the case next time. Seven six of hearts under the gun and we raise to 15. This is a little loose, but we're feeling ourselves and playing with the flow of the game. It gets folded to the blinds and both of them make the call. So we're going three ways to the flop and it is nine, three, four, rainbow. We have a gut shot plus a backdoor heart draw, small blind checks, and big blind leads into us for 25. We call and the small blind folds. 
The turn brings the Queen of Spades. The big blind now leads for 75. Since we don't pick up any additional equity, we just muck our hand here. It would have been nice to pick up a hand since we are both playing deep. Okay, so we have a seven of diamonds in the cutoff. Low Jack raises to 20. He's been very active and pretty sticky for the most part. So we're going to see a flop with him. Also, we're both playing pretty deep. Nobody else calls, so we're going heads up. And the poker gods have answered our prayers. They have given us the dream flop of 10, 8, 3, all diamonds. He checks and we can't let this street go unbet, so we fire out 25. He calls. This is kind of weird since we blocked the nut flush draw and he's been c betting almost every time he's been the preflop raiser. Well, we go to a turn and it is the six of hearts. It's a complete blink and now he leads for 35. What the heck could he have here? This type of play doesn't align with his normal betting pattern. We don't think this could be complete air, so he's got to have some sort of semi-value hand or maybe a draw. We want him to pay for whatever he's looking for on the turn. So we put in a raise to 165. Crazy enough, he snap calls. The river brings a safe card for us, but it could be an action killer as it is the five of diamonds. This brings four to the flush, and unless he has something like the king of diamonds, it's going to be hard for him to call. So when he checks, we choose to size up to 500. We polarize to make it seem like a nuts or bluff type of hand. We're hoping he thinks the latter. He shows his cards. He has pocket tens for a flop set. This is perfect. He's not the type of guy to fold. Like we said earlier, super sticky. After some deliberation, he ends up putting in the fold. Ugh, what a horrible river. I have a feeling that if the river bricked off an offsuit card, then we would have gotten the 500. I guess we can't be too greedy, and we always have to thank the poker gods for not putting out a pair of board. for a fan favorite the suited one gapper we have jack nine of clubs in the big blind middle position cut off button and small blind all call we check our option we are going to a multi-way flop of nine five three with two hearts small blind checks and we put out a feeler bet of 15 only middle position and cutoff call so now it's three ways to the turn of the seven of clubs we didn't improve, but we could definitely still have the best hand here, so we bet 25. Middle position calls and cutoff folds. So we're going heads up to a river, which is the Jack of Spades. We just improved our hand to top two, so we size up and bet 80. Middle position now feels like we need to play for a bigger pot. She raises us to 175, only 95 more. This is such a milky raise. It feels like we're being taken to value town here. Does she really have a straight or a set? Did she delay a street to raise us? I don't know. That seems kind of doubtful. The only hand that we see her having here that beats us is like 10 8 of hearts. It's hard to fold this hand, but it's such a value raise. She can have lower two pairs, I guess. Well, we make the call after a lot of thought and she shows 6-5 off suit. We win. Wow. It was a good bet by her because we were nearly folding. This is definitely not going to be the last we see of her though. In this next hand, we get involved with the same lady in the previous hand. We have Ace Queen or as I like to call it, Smoke. Under the gun plus one. Under the gun limps and we raise to 20. Middle position calls, button calls, and under the gun calls. So we're going four ways to the flop, which is queen, jack, five, 
with two clubs. It checks to us and we bet 35. Only MP and under the gun call. The turn is the seven of spades. This is a good card for us since it's a super blank. It doesn't complete any apparent two pairs or straights. It checks to us again and we size up now to 125. MP calls and under the gun folds. River is the six of clubs, which brings in the front door club flesh. This is a spot where we have to check. She fairly quickly cuts out $250 and places those chips in the betting circle. Since this particular player has been showing up with some bluffs lately and value bluffs at that, we think she's trying to switch it up and bluff and now bet big. We take about 45 seconds to go through all of the possible hands that she can have and eventually put it in the call. She shows up with the bad news and tables 7-4 of clubs for the flush. I guess we could have gotten away from this, but her previous play was the reason she got paid on this hand. When I said that it wouldn't be the last time that we were going to see her, I meant it. We look down at pocket fours under the gun. We raise two fifteen. MP, who is the same lady as the previous two hands, calls. Cut off button, small blind, and big blind all call as well. So we're going six ways to the flop of Jack five four rainbow. Yes, sir. Another set. Small blind and big blind. Check to us and let's build a pot. This board. Isn't that wet, but there are definitely a bunch of hands that can call us here, so we bet 35. Only MP and the big blind call. So we are going three ways to the turn of the seven of hearts. Big blind checks to us, and now we size up to 140. Not very many two pair combos are here, and it's unlikely that anybody has 8 6 or 6 3. Big blind folds, and just as we would suspect, MP calls. We wouldn't want it any other way. We weighted her range heavily toward a jack by her profile type. Heads up to the river, which is the six of hearts. Kind of a gross card. It brings a one-liner to the straight. If she holds hands like eight, seven or four, three, then we can be beat. But like we thought the previous street, she's weighted toward a jack and it's unlikely that she has a hand like jack eight or jack three in a raised pot. If we check, we're missing out on a lot of value. If we bet the size we want, she's folding all hands that we have crushed. So we choose a size of 160. It's small, but it'll get jacks to call and we can bet fold in the spot if she raises us. She tanks for a bit and then eventually makes the call. We show and we're Good. This type of hand showcases the hands where you can get thin value in very light spots. All right, guys, another hand that I unfortunately could not get table footage of. So, so sorry about that. Uh, we have pocket deuces under the gun and we race to 15. I know a lot of the time you want to just limp in here and try to hit a set. But in order to balance our range, we do have to raise up front with small pocket pairs sometimes. So that's what we do. We get a couple of callers, but the big blind wants to play for a little bit more. So the big blind re-raises us to 65. We make the call and the other two players fold. So we're going heads up to a flop of Jack, Deuce, Nine. Let's go. That's right, we hit another set. Uh, we're feeling very confident that this player has a big hand. He has about 800 behind but he checks to us. This is a little fishy, but uh, this player doesn't three bet a lot, so he probably has a big hand. Maybe he's trying to pot control. Either way, let's get some money in there. We bet $120 and he quickly makes the call. The turn comes, it is a seven. So this card does not really help his three betting range. So when he checks into us, we're gonna put some more money in. We put $280 in. He looks at the 280 and he wants to play for it all. He jams into us. We quickly call and we're just hoping he doesn't have pocket jacks. The river comes. It's a six. He tables. Pocket aces. We show our hand and we win. We rake in a huge pot. Let's go.
it is mystery hand reveal time let's see if you got it right we are going to recap the hand real quick we are in the cutoff under the gun raises to 25 and only we call so we're going heads up to the flop of king jack eight all hearts he checks we bet 30 he calls turn is the three of hearts he checks we check back river is the five of hearts he fires out 80 and we make the call so what do we have here? A, ace queen with the queen of hearts. B, pocket jacks for the set. C, 10 9 for the flopped heart flush. Or D, king 10 with the 10 of hearts for the 10 high flush. Well, the correct answer is A. We had range advantage on the flop with a backup heart. The heart came on the turn, but it's not the nuts. Also, we want to disguise our hand, so that's why the check back. On the river, we can't raise, but our hand is too, too strong to fold, and we baited him to bet into us, so we just collect those chips. If you got this hand right, smash that like button. If you didn't, post what you thought we had and why you thought we had it. I appreciate all the participation, and it's fun to see you guys get involved. Well, that's it, guys. I appreciate you uh, staying to the end of the video. I had a lot of fun with this one, a lot of fun playing and a lot of fun editing. Um, I hope you guys like this video. There's many more to come. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. I would appreciate it and it definitely helps out the video. Like always, until next time, don't be ducking it. Run like Usain Bolt. Peace.